One is an incredible artist and the other is an audio engineer and musician, but together they're an amazing couple who are passionate creators and have been able to express themselves through their work. Join us as we welcome Stephanie McCann and Mikey Cuthbertson on today's Expressions Podcast. First take. Oh, Jesus. Ow. Oh, jeez. Sorry. Dixie had to climb up my leg. Oh, that's so perfect. It kind of broke up the awkward intro. Jeez. No, no, no. Take, take go, two. Go up. You go may up. put her in the scene. So, she wants to be on film. Oh, jeez. Oh. So, first and foremost, Stephanie and Mike, thank you so much for being on Expressions. Um, I know you guys are both creative personalities. I've never met you guys. Uh, before we get into the show, who is it you're familiar with in this group? Brian. <laughs> Brian. So this is this would be okay. So, how is you guys have known each other? What's the uh, the connection there? And then we'll talk a little bit more about your creative uh, creative differences. Sure. I uh, I was in love with photography in high school and tried to get a job at Henry's many many times. I finally got in, and I think Brian and I were hired at the same time. <laughs> Uh, yeah. And that was how many years ago? 15 and a bit now. Yeah, yeah. So we, we've known each other a long time. It's been a bit, it's been a minute. And um, <laughs> the coolest time in my, <clears throat> one of the coolest times in my adult life, I guess you could say, is when Mikey had me on stage to play uh, Jam Night. And uh, that was like 10 years after I had really played a drum set. And he's like, yeah, sure, here's some of my songs. Listen to them and then play with me in, in like a couple of weeks. And we did that and that was that was a lot of fun. That was a lot of fun. So, so fun, and not not just fun, and and this kind of leads to the whole point of what we're doing today. Um, as creators, we all have needs that need to be met, and those needs could be anything from you know interviewing the right person to getting that right guitar to you know finding that perfect song that just inspires you to anything. Um, for me, the need is to play, and at the time, I hadn't played in so long. And uh, you let that come out, and that gave me the, the belief that, yeah, okay, I could wait 10 years and still play. You know, I don't have to continue playing all the time to still consider myself somebody who can actually play. So sure. that was a big moment for me personally, uh, and that really helped a lot. And that let me go another 10 years before I was able to play again. <laughs> but I did, and I recorded it, and I had a great time doing it. So uh, th that one time that you gave me the opportunity to play in that jam night, uh, definitely gave me the confidence to put them down for a little while and get oh, back to them when I needed to. Oh, thanks. Thanks for the love of oh, man. Yeah. You know, obviously it's, it's something similar. I play, you know, all the time. I don't really do, you know, one year off or anything like that. I play pretty much every single day because, you know, if there's something like you said about being a creator and having that moment in time. And so, you know, when you practice, um, you know, music especially you kind of get to hang on to these moments in time so i can still play a lot of the old songs like that and it still takes me back to those those kind of memories and so i can kind of carry them with me in a little you know i mean a little bag of tricks that uh, you know lets me help entertain other other people and bring other people joy too so i know exactly what you mean about that i've had, I've had, I've had other experiences too with musicians where you know they'll let me hang you know some real serious cats will will, will, will let me hang back and it's like you see some you see some of the crazy things that they can do and you're like wow that's really cool i was glad i got to see that i was glad i got to be a part of that because then you kind of take a little bit of that home with you and just throw it in your bag of tricks right and you know pull it out when 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 you feel like it's uh it'll be fun you know and that's what's well, cool sure that's, sorry oh, ryan sorry. I was, I was just going to say, that's what your career. <laughs> <laughs> nah, it's just one of the things about music that's so good is it, you can always give to so many people. You know what I mean? Like you get, you can give opportunities and you can give confidence and you can give uh, wisdom and you can give experiences just by opening up your mind a little bit and letting people in. And, and that was definitely something that you did through music. Sorry, Ryan, go right ahead. Well, I was just going to say it also, I'm sure helps spark your creative side as well. Right. It's, it's one of those things that forced you to challenge yourself to try to create something on a, not a better level, but on a, just a competitive level, I would say. Yeah, there is definitely a competitive element to it. You know, I don't, I don't like, like to see, to say one, one person is better than another. The analogy I use is, is he a good drummer? Well, I don't know, he plays really fast. You know, there's always a subjective kind of element to who's better. But basically, you know, when you get people's attention, you make an impact. And that 
that, that impact, impact, if you can hold it, you can even have influence over people and kind of change their minds and develop real connections. So people, you know, that that's where the money comes from in the, in the, in the game, right? Like if you come out and make a big impact and people will jump up and they'll spend a little extra money or they'll feel a little bit better. And so it just kind of greases the wheels of, of, of commerce and sets that, that attitude. And it's not just commerce, but, but it's, you know, it's the whole thing. It's not, you're not just a creative when you're, you know, trying to market an idea or play something like we don't, I don't lift things because, you know, I'm going to get paid playing them at a show. I lift them so that when the opportunity comes for me to get a good show, I have material that people actually want to hear. You know what I mean? It's, it's, it's a different kind of thing, but, but without the competition, without the drive to get better and learn new tricks, you just, it just becomes stale very quickly. I play, I play all types of music instruments from the Native American pan flute to drum machines and DJs and guitars, bass, violin. I have an accordion in the other room. You know, there's, I don't stop working yeah. at you know trying to to get to the next level and learn the next skill that's really so, impressive that is really cool uh so when when you're um creating like when you're making music do you stick to one genre or do you just go like does something speak to you and you just run with it um i i like, I like to, to work, work with, with other customers like, like with customers and, and other clients so when yeah. when another yeah. creative person has an idea yeah They'll usually use my tech skills um, to kind of make an album or to put on a big show or whatever it is that they're doing. So that's what I mean. I'm so lucky because I get to go from everything from Punjabi music in Branton and Persian music and hip hop music and country music. And it doesn't, it's very fluid for me. I can play all of that stuff and I can hang with all a lot of those cats. I have, singing bells and tablet drums as well and stuff like that. So that's pretty cool. Just to clarify, when I asked you earlier, what is your creative specialty in, in the email that I sent out? You said you're an audio engineer. Yeah. Production is your main gig. So main I know gig. you as musician, guitar player, and I know that you play everything. Like I know that you've gone on to do your own stuff where you can, you know, pretty much a one man show. Um, but you love the production side of it. You love helping other people get get their sounds is pretty much what you're saying oh yeah that's the that's my main bread and butter for sure hands down i we, i have crew at music 21 that's you know before covid anyway it was about 30 different technicians and people that run and we have trucks and warehouses and video equipment cameras lighting equipment you know stages you know anything that you can imagine we have game shows you know it's it's an insane the kind of stuff that we have there and a lot of it is very highly specialized so you just kind of go in and learn some gear um you know and then practice so for me because i'm an audio engineer i do uh waveform math and and because i can do that math i can hang the speakers for big concerts and that's a very valuable skill to technician um and then of course the same thing is when i'm doing those gigs let's say for a big bollywood show and i'm just hanging some speakers you know at the same time we're kind of moving on to the next gig which might be a, a game show or a cooking tv show or something where i'll be setting up the little lavalier mics and getting the interviews and doing the sound room uh stuff. and we have teams camera guys and video guys and stuff like that so I, like I've, I've actually done a lot of really cool things. Like I met a lot of really famous people that way. I've worked with Drake. I've worked with, you know, the companies that work with all types of crazy people, all the Canadian rock stars, a whole bunch of American ones. We just did Black Diamond Ball for Rogers TV um, on February 28th. And that was the first prime time slot on TV I had for, nice. for, for engineering and stuff, you know, but I've been in a lot of, once again, Bollywood DVDs that you find in convenience stores. You know, I've mixed tons of those live in Toronto, live in Toronto. You know, that's usually my work on a lot of that stuff. You got to go where they're paying, right? That's that's yeah, probably man. one of your one of your best gigs, I would imagine. The, it's pretty popular, right? So everybody, Very popular, for sure. Yeah, and it's good. It's it's good music. You know, not everybody understands it, but you know, I, I think it's really good. That's awesome. Um, so I was curious, how did you? Um, know that music and sound engineering was the thing that you wanted to do 
was there a big moment or um i in for music when i was 14 i i got invited to sing in a heavy metal rap band and it kind of really was a very positive influence instead of hanging with hooligans i was hanging with musicians and we were practicing instead of just you know wasting time or or getting in trouble and then for technicians when i was when i was in a band i hired a studio to make a record for me and it i was very unhappy with the quality i didn't think the person worked very well with me he was you know didn't listen and you know it wasn't, it wasn't really a very positive experience and so that's kind of when it dawned on me that there is a, a future for me in kind of being a technician and providing those services because it's more than just a service like to record a band or to put on a tv show it's also, it's also as you guys know like an experience for people they also have to get along with you and you know that you know you have to kind of know how to hang and be cool and stuff so that's that's how i got into it i got bad service and decided to do it myself that's awesome relationships are so important and just enjoying what you do i mean if you're going to go to work to every day and butt heads with the people you're working with or not have good communication to get the point across you're just you're fighting uphill it just doesn't make sense yeah um steph yeah. we were talking about how well, mikey was saying how you know the gear and all the things that he works with are so important but you had some kind of revelation when you got some special gear for what you do as well <laughs> Yeah, I um I was drawing when I was a kid, and I used to love it, and I didn't do it like you, put it off for 15 years or something, and I don't know what happened. I got into Japanese cartoons, and I was like, I can do that. I want to try drawing that. And um, Mike invested in me. He put a big chunk of money down for some Copic markers, and I couldn't let that go to waste. So I really put a lot of effort into, into doing that, and it kind of got me back into art, and that's only been four years ago that I got back into it. So the work you do is just so different than anything I'd seen. I thought it was all computer generated at first, you know, but I was, I was about to ask, cause I'm just scrolling through our Instagram now and I'm thinking this does look computer generated. So talk to me about how you create this. Cause I'm, I'm really curious just looking through your Instagram. Um, so at the beginning, the anime art, <laughs> that's all markers and pens. So that's all traditional drawing. So, you know, sketch it out, do the line work. Sometimes I'll do like a, a dip pen and ink, calligraphy pen for line work or just plain like liners. Then you erase the, the pencil underneath and just go in with the colors. But yeah, Copic markers are not like any markers I've ever used before. They blend beautifully. You can really get some really cool techniques with them. And uh, it took a lot of practice to get used to them because I've never used them before. So. Yeah, I mean, I like keeping all my old stuff on Instagram so I can see my own progression from way back when I started and now, and now all my stuff, the last probably five to 10 posts are actually digital. So I've, I've come full circle, I guess, back into, people thought I was doing digital at the beginning and now I am. <laughs> <laughs> Which is pretty well, cool, still very impressive. And yeah, if you think awesome. about it, an image that you can't really tell is digital or not, I mean, that just is right on that border, right on that boundary of, you know, is this something that somebody can do or is this something that somebody just kind of went doo -doo -doo? but at the same time, neither is is easy. I mean, they're yeah. they're each a completely different art form and you've kind of made them look exactly the same. <laughs> it's, hard, it's crazy because I think um, digital artists aren't given as much credit as they're due. I think people think, oh, you know, it's an, it's an iPad. You can just, people think you trace it or it does the work for you, but it's, it's the, the process is the same, you know, you do a sketch on a layer, you do a line art on another layer, you do your colors on different layers, and it's a completely different technique, but yeah, it's still hard. It's still, it's still drawing. <laughs> yeah. And, and I can do also, it. <laughs> uh, no, me neither. I do <laughs> stick figures. Um, but you also do watercolor, I see here. Yeah, I've done some watercolor, yeah. I, I was... It, it's uh, stunning. It's I, I'm looking at it right now, and um, like yeah, all of it. When I look at the watercolors and the and the uh, the ink drawings, um, the thing that's always impressed me. My, my wife is the artist, and not me. Um, is is someone like yourself? You can take it and you can get that gradient of a shadow in there that I have to use a camera to get. Um, but you've got it. Like some of these before I clicked on them, I thought they were photos. 
when I when I looked at it. And then I look at it and I'm like, oh, well, that is a drawing. I can see the texture of the paper. Um, there's a black and white one here, uh, a pencil drawing. Uh, she's got a feather as an earring. You'll probably know the one I'm talking about. Yeah. Uh, the the detail of feather is is astounding. Is um, yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna ask you the same question. What like you you talked about the uh, the Japanese art. Um, but I, I'm seeing uh, I'm seeing a, a large Japanese influence in your in your art, but it's not all Japanese. There's one of a couple of guys in pumpkins, a couple of different versions of it. Oh. I guess one is uh, in progress and one is complete. Yeah. Um, what wh where do you get your inspiration from? Oh, lots of different things. I mean, mainly right now I do drawings for me. I don't do it for um, any any work. To, for a living or anything I just do it because I like to do it so I don't think my inspiration is that deep but I really enjoy I really enjoy watching anime and that really got me into drawing again and then um, I got into k-pop and the visuals of k-pop I think is pretty pretty crazy so you know I watch some music videos and I'm like I should draw this too so um, you know I've got some influences from Asian cultures I traveled to Korea and Japan and um, I just think that it's it's really different than what you see here, and I really can yeah, draw a lot of inspiration from that. Um, I have a question. I, I was actually going to ask something along the lines of what Mark was saying. What what's your inspiration? But are are you a fan of the things that you're drawing? Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, <laughs> the other thing, because uh, I've noticed you've drawn quite a bit of BTS, and that's yes. a big Korean pop band right now. My sister's a super fan. Um, yeah. I've listened to quite a bit myself. So are you a fan? I would say I'm ARMY, yeah. <laughs> I'm a fan. <laughs> I got to see them in Chicago last year, and I had tickets for this year, but COVID canceled it. But it's, uh, yeah, I think that they're amazing, and the message is amazing. And, yeah, I like yeah. BTS a lot. <laughs> I, I fortunately, I, I was actually talking to Ryan about this earlier today. I never thought I would get into international music or anything like that. But then uh, my sister introduced me to K-pop. And yeah. she's just like uh, so influenced by it. She loves it so much. And then when I when she started showing me the music videos, that was the first thing that captivated me. They're like I, they're like too. movies. Um, yeah, I would listen to the music, and then as soon as I saw the music videos, I was like, I need to watch more of this. This is wild. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's amazing. Um, do you have a bias <laughs> in in BTS? <laughs> yes, V is my bias in BTS. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Same as my sister. That's that's oh. hilarious. <laughs> cool. Yeah. Any, yeah. any uh, favorite fan questions here? <laughs> I'm just enjoying the art here. This is it's beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> I have to admit, I just learned what Army meant last night watching the Grammys. I had never... oh yeah, they were in the Grammys last night. They didn't win, unfortunately. I, I didn't stay long enough to watch, but uh, <laughs> I tuned out as soon as I saw the Lionel Richie tribute to Kenny Rogers, and I just <laughs> I had to stop watching. <laughs> but uh, I mean, here's something actually that I wanted to ask both of you guys. I, I know that you're each artists in completely different ways, but I don't know about you. I don't know about all of you guys on the panel, but for me, I found, I don't know if it's more lately than ever, but when I hear something that connects with me, boom, tears, emotion i just i connect to it and i just like whole this is like the best thing ever and i just well up and just get chills is that just a me thing or are we all do we all does that that connect with everybody yeah yeah, yeah. there's definitely sometimes dust in my eye and something leaks <laughs> out but. oh yeah oh, and here's yeah. the other one i really like when you get the when you get the tingles right and you hear something you see something you're like ooh, ooh, i like really? that yeah. Like Buddy Rich, every single yeah. time. Every time you watch Buddy Rich, just full body tingles. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, um, I think it's just it's a, a normal human reaction, right? You hear something that connects with you, and it speaks to you on a, a different level. And once you have that sort of interaction with, a, with whether it's a song, whether it's something you're watching on television, you, you have that sort of experience, and it's you can't explain it. You can't explain it. You can't describe it. It's, uh, it's one of the craziest things in the world, honestly. I think it's it also really influenced is. by memory, right? Like yeah, we all have yeah. memories growing up, uh, songs that we connect to that just every time you hear it, it brings you right back to it. Um, mm -hmm. How is family and how has your upbringing brought both of you into your creative uh, paths? I know on our episode zero, we talked about how we were each really uh, influenced by what our parents did 
and uh, kind of trickled down to us. Did you guys get to absorb anything from your parents? Was there any of that there for you? Yeah, um, my dad was, he's a writer, he, well, he's a teacher, but he is a writer at heart. He absolutely loves writing, but he also draws as well. And I think I get my drawing influence from him. When I was in elementary school, he would put uh, my lunch in a brown paper bag and he would put a funny comic drawing on it. And, and my friends and I would just be like, what's on this one? You know, and it would be a, a fun that. little thing. And that's probably my first memory of drawing. Uh, you know, my mom put me in watercolor classes and um, she's a flight attendant. And that's where I kind of got my influence for wanting to travel and following that, wanting to take photos. So, yeah. My, my my parents have been big influence for sure. I um I play with my uncle George. Um, we live together, neighbors, and he plays a left-handed country style. And basically, when I came around, he would just stay up all night and play guitar with me. And and him and I would do that. God knows how many times, hundreds of times, that we would be up till three or four o'clock in the morning until there were no cigarettes left. And, and and all that kind of stuff and 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 that's we, for years and years we played like that so i would say like from music definitely my george is the one who inspired me to kind of take it somewhere and you know practice for real and not just that be a crappy hobby or something do you ever try and well, not try but does you ever find yourself falling into comparing your moments to that like you're in the studio you're doing your thing and in the back of your mind you're just thinking this feels as good as hanging out, jamming back in the day with your you, uncle. You try to, um, maybe like, I guess the best way to describe it is you try to bring your energy to it. So when I'm trying to give that, you know, what I would call the around kitchen table vibe or, or the drawer slam vibe, I try to bring that energy myself and, and play with that kind of vigor or try to play with that kind of enthusiasm. And sometimes it wears off on other people that you're playing with and so you can end up with, you know, different moments, obviously, but you, know, you kind of inspire them based on what makes you feel good and what makes you happy in the end or how you kind of see the music or feel feel where, where it should go next. And we, we always talk about a lot of uh, mental health conversations on the show. Um, Steph, I, I know that uh, you know I've been a big fundraiser, I guess. I don't know what the right word advocate. is. Advocate. Yeah. Advocate. Thank you yeah. uh, for mental health for a while. And I've got the Faces of Hope mug up there from the big thing that we did at Law Studio. Um, we have the newspaper clipping from Snap on our fridge still. So. Oh, really? That's very yeah. cool. It was. It felt so good doing something like that. I, I think a lot of people got something from it. And um, I'm really hoping that this show has another impact on people as well. Uh, so finding out how people deal with adversity and finding out how people deal with the setbacks and get through them so that they can keep on making and keep on creating is a big part of what the show is all about. Um, have either of you run into a situation where you could have just been like, you know what, screw this, I'm done, I'm out, and then you said, no, nope, I have to stick to it. So two-part question. One, did you have a situation like that? And two, when you did, what was it that kept you on the straight and narrow to, to follow through and to make it happen? Hmm. Me no. I, as soon as I when I started in my first band, I was kind of married to it, you know. Like kind of then, it, I mean, my uncle George was the one who kind of showed me how it could be a real thing, and and that there are lots of different jobs in the industry. And I've been playing, playing, you know, almost every day for twenty years or something. Awesome. Awesome. I use I use art as an outlet. Like I really pour myself into it when I'm doing it. I don't, I don't really, I try to focus on that and I try and use it as an escape sort of, it's almost meditative for me to just sit down and do it. All, almost all of my drawings I'll do from beginning to end in one day. Um, wow. But be, yeah, yeah, they're long days. <laughs> I was gonna say, I can imagine. <laughs> I don't That's like crazy. leaving them unfinished, which is why sometimes it's hard to start. Cause I'm like, if I start this, I have to finish it. <laughs> but I really try not to put pressure on myself because I don't, I don't, I only do it for myself. So yes, of course there are days I have art block and I'm like, I should draw. I should really draw. I'm like, why am I telling myself I should draw? If I don't want to do it now, it's okay. I can do it later. Um, but just doing it actually helps get me back into the groove. 
Yeah. Can you guys describe a time where you were you were challenged or you challenged yourself to to try and complete something or to improve on what it was that you you were doing? Because I know for me personally, I feel the same as Mike, where you know I've I've always loved what I do, but I also like to try and challenge myself, and in those challenges comes frustrations. Yeah, I'm. I feel like I'm a perfectionist, so it is. It, once I start something, if it's if it's not good, it's really hard for me to keep going. I'm really I'm really hard on myself that way. I'm always I'm always wanting to do the best I can do, and I compare myself a lot to other artists. But I think that you have to put the time in, and you have to practice, and you have to try new things to get better, to be more well-rounded. Like Mike's playing a hundred instruments and. If he didn't want to get better, he wouldn't do that. So. True. A hundred instruments, a hundred and one. A hundred and one, yeah. <laughs> Depends. Well, I lost count. <laughs> <laughs> You're still so young. There could be so many more. There are many more, many more. I love. You ever that. tried to invent an instrument? Like at this point, you've got to be halfway to inventing your own. Uh, uh, no, no, I have, I have not. not. But my but friend Steve friend Kinnear, <laughs> who um, I used to work with a long time ago, he yeah, built a pyramid instrument uh, okay. out of uh, uh, transistor radio <laughs> and stuff. And he, he was showing me how to do how it. And one day I might build, build a, a theremin. Yeah. Uh, but nice. I think, I think, I think well, if I was to build, build an instrument, I would probably just build my own guitar. I know the guitar pretty well. I don't. I don't. I wouldn't know how to invent an instrument, but I think I could put some strings on a piece of wood and you know, make it sound okay. I'm just trying to remember the name of the musician who has the guitar with like horn instruments and all kinds of different instruments all on that guitar. I had the album Bella Fleck and the Fleck Tones. Yeah. If you yeah. haven't heard of Bella Fleck, check it out. He's got a guitar oh, yeah. with like every instrument imaginable built into this thing. It kind of reminds me of Ryan's question. Have you ever built an instrument? This guy literally designed this crazy guitar. It's crazy. <laughs> Bella Fleck and the Fleck Tones. Just a little thing for I'll, you. I'll believe, I'll, be, believe I'll be checking it out on YouTube for sure. Nice. <laughs> um, I, I got to say, Stephanie, your way of saying that you do this for yourself, it's exactly in line with my I shoot for me hashtag. You know, it, it's a soul saver, okay. don't you think? <laughs> it makes sense. I shoot for me. You draw for you. Um, I, I think there's a lot to be said for it. Now, Mikey, you're you're able to transition and do this as a daily thing. I mean, this is your nine to five. This is what you do. It's your bread and butter. If you don't work, you don't get paid. So how do you deal with that kind of stress? Is it is it even a stress or do you just like get up, go to work, and go come home and it just happens? To be, to be honest with you, I already, already dealt with dealt the stress in my younger years. I, you know, when I was young and I'm only making a hundred dollars a day, you know, to, to, to pull some cases in the club or something like that, you know, those days are long behind me now. I have a lot of experience on TV sets and on concerts and all the different positions like front of house, system technician, uh, technical director. I ran all the clubs in Barry for, for, for many years. So. You know, if you saw concerts in Barrie, chances are I was behind the helm at those those events. And there's lots of other ones, too. So it just, you know, what started as, you know, in your local pub with your friends trying to make $100, because I st stuck with it, I ended up with better and better gigs over time. You know, it didn't happen all at once. It wasn't like one day, you know, I woke up and got really good at it. I still learn every day. And I still try and get better and better every day and, and get to the next level and, and do the next gig. But it, I, I, the reason I, it doesn't stress me out anymore is because I've already done that. I already slept in, in vans and on couches and, you know, went on the road with, with, with crazy people and, you know, slept in hotel rooms and all that kind of stuff. And, and now yeah, you put in the grind. Customers. Yeah. Yeah. And now, now my customers, customers are very happy to pay what I'm asking to get premium access to. You know, to have my time, to have my number on the phone so that if they have any questions or, or last minute troubles, they can call me and I can go and correct them. And that's, and that's really 90% of what my job is, is showing up to places and kind of fixing technical glitches and errors for, for high stress situations. So the other reason it doesn't stress me out is because I always feel like, you know, everybody else is stressed out. And so, you know, if you're stressed out, you're going to kind of get everybody else's negative um you know 
versions. But if you're polite and friendly and professional, and you, know, you kind of understand the situation, then people will actually treat you with respect and be nice. So it doesn't really stress me out that bad. If anything, if anything was going to stress me out, I do have some, some customers that are like, you know, crazy. Like they're, they are divas. You know, I am working with musicians and artists a lot of the time, and they can be a volatile bunch. You know, you just can't can't predict their personality sometimes. So I have been in stressful situations before, but, you know, I just, you know, I don't try not to let it bother me. I think uh, you hit the nail on the head. It just takes time. Over time, you build up experience, you build up confidence, you build up all the tools in your toolkit that you can just pull from every time you need it. And it makes a huge difference. It, it, so many people don't expect that you have to put the time in. I know in our world of photography, you get a people you get people who will come in and buy, you know, uh, an expensive camera and think that oh, I've got a great camera, I'm going to make great photos, you know. It's or you know, buy a great guitar and be like, oh, I'm a great guitarist. What well, at least Mark, you know, you buy great guitars and then you say, well, I'm 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 a good great collector. Good. <laughs> I'm sure you can play better than I can. That's not the point. The point is. Um, people put a lot of weight in their equipment and they put less weight into um, understanding and knowing that it just takes time. Were you working with me, Steph, when um, Pete was working there? Pete started just on the cusp of when I left. Matt Wills was I know, there. Though, I know right? Pete. I remember when Pete used to come in and I was like, why aren't you being a photographer for a living? Because your photos are amazing. And now he's a YouTube star. So <laughs> I know, right? It's just amazing, yeah. though, that we got to work with such talented people, Matt Wills, Peter McKinnon, um, so a list of other people that we get to work with. And I kind of touched on it in the last show, how uh, it's very easy to fall into the trap of comparing yourself to these other artists and that bringing you down in itself. Um, but it's at the same time, you're learning from all these people. You're you're pulling something There's from here. and you're pulling something. There's always a gap between where you are and where somebody else is. And it's hard to acknowledge that and still keep going. And to that point, I want to I want to reference what uh, Mike was talking about earlier there. Just again, going back to that grind um, as somebody who, you know, pulled himself out of a dark place years ago. I know all too well about having to sleep on couches and unfortunately not by my own regard. Right. So to hear about, you know, sleeping in vans, sleeping on couches, going through uh, like the miles traveled it really shows like the character of somebody who who's able to persevere through all of that because it shows that a you care about what you do and b that you're not going to let anything stop you absolutely you can't let anything stop you well i mean if you let other people decide what you should do you'll just never be happy and so if that's mm -hmm. how you want to live you just got to come to that realization that you know you're going to sacrifice what's important to you for something that's important to somebody else. And that's just the realization of that. My mom always said, it's better to regret something you did than something you didn't do. I, mean, I kind of take that maybe a little bit to heart, but I, you know, I don't like giving up when I feel like I can you know, accomplish it. I'd rather fail and apologize you know, than give up and you know, before you try. I'd rather definitely rather try and fail for sure. I have a hard drive hard full drive of old songs old and old failures that will never be heard by any human being ever. And, and uh, I'm not embarrassed by them, you know. I, I still have them. I keep them. You never, never know, know, once again, when one of those little tricks are going to come in handy. And maybe it'll be a different context that sheds new light. And so it's just, it's just another skill. It's just another experience, you know, at least for me. Do you ever, um, with that hard drive of old songs, do you ever go back to it for inspiration? Like, you know, sit there, listen to a few of them and go, hey, you know what? I like that riff or I like that drum line or, or that bass line and pull it out and reuse it. Do you, do you use it as reference? Oh, yeah, for sure. I recycle as often as I can, for sure. Yeah, some, 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 some things um, are really meaningful, you know, like I don't know how it would be for photography or for drawing, but for music, you know, when you have a little moment that you just love the way something sounds, you know, you, you kind of start to incorporate it. I know every singer does the same thing. They'll start with a voice. Maybe they like to sing like Pearl Jam, so they'll imitate Eddie Vedder. And then basically they learn to love to imitate Eddie Vedder and it becomes part of them. So even though it's really they're trying to sound like any better, that's the way they themselves want to sound. So I, I don't like, as far as that concern, I, I just not not sure if I would like let somebody else decide that for me. I'm sorry, I lost the question there. 
No, that's great. Um, how has COVID impacted your creativity and your art making or music making? Um, for better or for worse. <laughs> yeah, it's been a, it's been an interesting journey for me anyway. Um, in I guess in March, beginning of COVID, I was furloughed for a month, and I was like, "What am I gonna do?" I bought a bunch of stuff to make jewelry. I bought stuff to make macrame. I got back into watercolor. I got I just like I couldn't do all this stuff, and um, it didn't all stick. <laughs> and I ended up uh, doing more drawings, and then I found uh, I found some artists that I adore online that do digital work, and I saved up for an iPad, and that's. But like I said, just I started using the iPad in September, so it's still pretty new. And I also discovered macrame. I really like making macrame art, which is something I haven't shared anywhere, but it's hanging on my wall and in the closet wherever I can find space to put them. Um, but yeah, for, for a while there, I was just needing to do something creative, whatever it was, anything just to keep busy. Yeah, I, I definitely had a very similar experience during COVID. Yeah. Like I, I was off work for two months and I needed to do something like every day. So I got super into crocheting and yeah. I built a bunch of furniture, fixed up a bunch of things. It's interesting how time, um, you know, by yourself or uh, time away from doing something can reinvigorate passions that you either never yeah. had or um, have had. So, yeah, I think it was yeah. it was one of those things where I'm like, I never had this much time on my hands. So I'm gonna just try and do a bunch of stuff. Like I said, it didn't all stick, but it was it was interesting to try and find something new. Very cool. How about you, Mikey? Oh, I, yeah, when COVID hit, I lost all the gigs. Oh, hang on, Mikey's still on mute. Yeah, when, when, when COVID happened, I pretty much lost my gigs right away. And then for many months, it wasn't sure what was going to happen with anything. So I pretty much was just getting up and I was doing like a, like a morning warm-up show on, on Facebook. And I was playing live on Facebook every morning for about 30 minutes, different covers and requests and instrumentals and, and stuff like that. And just kind of spending some of that some of that love and some of that don't give up spirit at the beginning of it. And then a year in the COVID now, and it's like, I'm starting to get more of the broadcast style gigs. Um, so it's starting, I'm starting to get a little bit back into, uh, back into a production groove and stuff with, with my work. But as my client, I have, I've been playing more now than I have since I was in high school. Nice. It's good. I mean, everybody can take things in a very different way. Like COVID for many people was a very negative impact. And I like how you took something where, uh, you know, you don't have as many gigs, but you spent more time playing your instrument and spent, uh, you actually adapted things and used the internet to, you know, broadcast your music and, and take requests. That's there's a lot of places and businesses adapting right now to the new times. And I guess yeah. that's a testament to people's creativity even more so. Totally. And I think it's really important today. If anybody knows, you know, about the world, then they know that they've got to do a little bit more today than they did last year or the year before. Like if you thought your year was hard in 2019, it's like, uh, you still got to grunt. You got to grind a little bit harder now. now than you did mm -hmm. before. Otherwise, Otherwise you, you will, you get totally swept up in this whole COVID madness. You know, I couldn't imagine being unemployed for a year with nothing to do or anywhere to go. You know, really yep. And that's that's a, a great point there is because if you think about it, how many times, I'm sure we've all said it um, or know somebody who said it where, you know, we think, oh, our, our life is over. This is the hardest it's ever been. My God, this is such a struggle. And then 2020 happened and it was kind of like a, a shell shock of, hey, it's really not that bad. All the the first world problems, so to speak, that we have to deal with on a regular basis really are not a big issue. Um, it's it's crazy. I'm curious to see how uh, how we adapt going forward once this pandemic eventually subsides. Yeah. I, uh, I just wanted to quickly kind of on that point, 
made me kind of laugh inside a little bit. It's kind of like I'm talking to my wife and you know, I I'm stupid when somebody says, Hey, how you doing? I'll say, stop yelling. I think it was a Sheldon Isaac thing from back in the day. Anyway, um, so she'll say something like that, and I'll say, "Stop yelling at me!" She'll, "Oh, that's not yelling. You want to see yelling, right?" Okay. It's like 2019's around, and everybody's thinking, "Oh, I've got it so hard." 2020 comes around, and it's just like, "Oh yeah, you think you got it hard? Yeah. Here you go. <laughs> yeah, prepare yourself." Well, I, I think it's interesting, and as creatives, I think it's really interesting to see how people, like Aurora said, are diversifying and trying different things. Um, as soon as the lockdown happened, I was doing adult coloring books. And I, I remember how important it was to me to have good coloring pencils. And I, like Shelly has all these pencils in the house and I won't touch them because it feels like I'm just scraping the paper. But I get these really nice pencils and it feels nice and I'm able to draw and the color is nice and thick. That's exactly how you got going with these markers that you have, isn't it, Steph? Because I never even heard about what a Copic was. Yeah. I still don't know what it is. <laughs> I looked it up. It's actually super cool. Yeah, they're I'll, I'll share a link in our chat. <laughs> they're all based markers. And it's funny because Mike's like, so which ones do you want? And I'm like, no, I need like 72. He's like, no, you don't. You can start with like five. I'm like, I can't make anything with five colors. You need to buy me a shitload of markers so I can make a whole piece of art because I can't do it with just a couple. He's like, okay, I'm going to buy that many markers. You better make something. I'm like, I will. I will. <laughs> Because it's a serious yeah. investment. I mean, even the colored pencils, we're talking $80 for just a yes. normal package of, of pencils. Yes. And and I was toying with getting into colored pencils as well, but it's it's another chunk of money. And I was like, I should just stick with the markers for now. And I already got the iPad. So. But it's such a cool look. So yeah. explain how you found these things and why that's what you gravitated to. I think um, a lot of manga artists use Copic markers. And because I was drawing anime characters i just kind of wanted to try that and i knew that they were like the top of the line for alcohol markers and i just i didn't i didn't want to settle so i just went all in nice if you're gonna go go right just make it happen yep well i think it's also a real testament to mikey's investment in you he knows you guys i mean you guys have been together pretty much as long as shelly and i have how how, how many years now 18 18 Man, well, it's, I'm really happy that you guys are doing well. I'm really, really happy because you're you're great people. Uh, I I love seeing the progression that you've had individually, um, and, and Steph, like when you first left Henry's, I mean, I know you went over to Intrepid Travel because you wanted to go travel. I had yeah. no clue you were doing the art side of things until I saw your stuff pop up on Instagram, oh. and I was like, <laughs> so cool! I'm so happy you're doing that, Mikey. I've always known you were creating, always known. Um, since day one that I've known you, it's always been, yeah, you are the musician and <laughs> it's great to see. And I'm so happy that you're able to transition into this crazy COVID time and still do well from it. And as you say, you're doing more now than when you were in high school. That's pretty sweet. I mean, that's the dream, right? It is. Good for you. I, I, I have a quick question too. Is Did you get to see Stephanie kind of discover her passion for drawing? Like, was that something that she was doing before you guys had met? Or was that something that you got to witness kind of from day one? Uh, Stephanie was an artist before we met, and she kind of stopped doing art for a handful of years. And then she requested a book from me, a dictionary, um, mm -hmm. a, a picture, a illustrated dictionary, illustrated yeah. dictionary <laughs> so that you'd have like all the designs for all, 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 you know, the whole dictionary. And she didn't draw that. She was gonna do like calligraphy pens and stuff. She didn't do that. And then instead, it was like we were watching anime Dragon Ball and stuff like that. And it was like, hey, I like, I like this. this. And, I, and, I, and I actually supported it because I like comic books and I like that kind of stuff. So when she was like, hey, I want to draw Japanese comic book characters, I'm like, heck yeah. Super cool. <laughs> yeah, it's not, at all what I, it's not at all what I expected you to be drawing, Steph. I of know. all things I didn't mean hey that. i'm a fan i'm a fan there's some <laughs> of that's like i don't c keep up with a lot of the japanese uh culture but i did see uh what looked like some nintendo drawings in that pumpkin um <laughs> yeah, so, I, I never make my own characters it's something i haven't delved into i don't really know how to do it and it's overwhelming to me so i just draw characters that already exist but that was that was my attempt at making bowser and Boo into people for halloween mm -hmm. and i was like that's the only time I've tried it and I haven't tried it again, but I did like how that one turned out. I, th I was going to say, I think you should try that again. Thank you. <laughs> Maybe I will. Um, so I hear quite a bit about 
uh, anime and manga. Um, I mean, I myself am a bit of a fan of it. I've gone to Anime North many years. It's unfortunate oh, yeah. that, uh, uh, oh yeah, you do too? Yeah, my sister and I go. <laughs> Oh, okay, very cool, very cool. Yeah, yeah I've, I've missed it the last last year and this year it's canceled again because of yeah. COVID, unfortunately. Um, do you guys have a favorite anime or either one of you guys? Uh, we've, we've watched so many. Um, I, think, I think one of my favorites that we watched together is Full Metal Alchemist. But nice. I think what got me back into trying was Dragon Ball Z. <laughs> Yeah, I, I'm not mad at that. <laughs> there you go. Well, you can't argue with the results, so. <laughs> no. Awesome. All right. So we're going to start winding down. I've got a couple of questions that we didn't ask you in the in the email that I sent you that I'm going to throw at you first. Uh, first off, um, I'm going to start with you, Mikey, and then Steph, you as well. Uh, this is a question that we ask everybody. Uh, what's your jam? What are you listening to right now? What, what song, uh, when you're working or when you just need to get amped up, to get your day going, do you listen to it every single time you hear it? It's just like, yes, this is my jam. Yes, I have a jam this year. It is Rattlesnake by King Gizzard and the Lizard Wizard. <laughs> Sorry, so I missed that. I missed that. Rattlesnake by who? <laughs> uh, by King Gizzard and the Lizard Wizard. King Love Gizzard, it. the Love Lizard it. Wizard. Put that, if you guys are, I don't know, I guess if you're all going home or you're all at home already, very nice yeah. time you get in the car, put on that song, and if you're not driving 120 kilometers an hour, you know, I'll owe you a Coke. Done. <laughs> I'm finding that song as soon as- I just found it on YouTube. I'm going to listen to it when the show's over. <laughs> awesome. Steph, how about you? Um, I am listening to BTS, so- um, I think one that gets me pumped up is Not Today. And if you want to listen to some K-pop, I like that song. <laughs> cool. Good song. I approve. <laughs> yeah. I'll check that one out too. Beautiful. Okay. And the other question I'm going to have is uh, tools of the trade. What do you guys each use on a day-to-day -day that makes your life better? Makes what you do easier, better, and that you would recommend to anybody getting into your trade should have or should think of or should do. Tool of the trade. <laughs> picking something up. Uh -oh. I was gonna say he's got it right there. <laughs> you, know, you know, I use this within, guy. I use, I use this thing, thing all the time. time. It's, it's a um, simple, simple little, little two microphone channel input. input. So whenever I need to do anything like a vocal line or play any instrument, I got a microphone. I grab this thing, plug it in the computer. It's portable. It's easy to use. And when you get one of these things, you want to get a really nice one. I got one with a knee preamps, so it actually has like killer sound. So this thing has like pretty much been my savior for the last few years. What's the brand and model number of that? This is uh, this is the UR RT2 by Steinberg. It's a Yamaha music product. Steinberg UR22, or is it? Nice. There it is. There it is. <laughs> you are RT2. Very cool. Very cool unit. Very cool unit. Awesome. Thank you. And Steph, how about you? What's your tool of the trade? I don't I don't know. I don't necessarily have a specific tool of the trade. I think if you've got a sketchbook and some pens that you like. When I was getting into drawing, I really liked having different weighted pens so you can try different techniques. Um, but having that handy if you find inspiration is really nice. Perfect. Awesome. Actually, can I change my answer? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like I show you guys. This is my Gibson ES three thirty nine custom shop. This is the guy. I couldn't I couldn't do anything without this. Mark, pick your job off. I was just Mark. gonna say Mark is salivating Mark. over there. Well, I, I, and I'm I'm jealous because my dad has one of those. Oh, amazing. <laughs> it's not it's yeah, his uh he got it for Christmas this year and uh I'm in Thunder Bay, and he's in Newmarket, and I haven't had a chance to play it uh, oh, as man. much as I play. I've got a repertoire of about uh, – I'm that guy with, you know, the, the 20 riffs, you know, that, that he plays. Yeah. And I don't know any whole songs, just a bunch of riffs. But I want to go through my repertoire on that guitar. Uh, <laughs> beautiful. Nice. Okay, um, last thing I'm going to ask of you guys tonight is the challenges. We ask our, our guests to issue a challenge to our viewers. 
Um, it's not something they have to submit back to us. It's just something that they can, you know, use in their day to day to um, keep them going. Uh, and I know you both have thought of a challenge. So Mikey, maybe you can go first and let us know what challenge that you thought of for our viewers. When I was um, younger, I got great advice from a guy who was the first on records. He said, Mike, you write a song every day, even if it's bad, even if it's terrible, because you can always get better. You can always learn something from, from your mistakes. So that's my challenge, to write a song every day to all musicians or non-musicians. Awesome. Not easy to do, but if you do, definitely. you'll be very good at writing songs. Awesome. Great, great challenge. Thank you. And Steph, how about you? Um, when I was getting back in drawing, I joined a challenge called uh, I was just some creative market or something. And it was just they give you a prompt every day and you just drew it. And it was may have been something out of your comfort zone or whatever. So I thought maybe pick 10 things, anything like a candle, a controller, a scene and write them on a list and then get a piece of paper and stick it in a hat and every day draw a number and draw that thing uh, for a week. And just whether you want to draw it or not, just try. <laughs> So both of your challenges are very similar in that it's forcing yourself to get through hurdles, um, creative barriers. One is you have to write a song every day, and the other is to grab a bunch of prompts, rip them up, uh, write them on a, a piece of paper, rip them up, put them in a hat, and then each day grab one and yeah. draw that. That's pretty cool. Um, and it goes back to the whole conversation we were having about experience. You know, you're gaining experience by doing each of those challenges so i think that's fantastic great stuff awesome and when we eventually have a facebook page i am going to upload all 10 of my photos just because i know you'll all get a laugh <laughs> <laughs> nice <laughs> well by the time everybody sees this we will have a facebook page so <laughs> <laughs> all right um did you guys want to ask uh, mikey or steph any other questions before we let them go for the night hey do you mind uh, if i ask I a ask question? question no yeah. please that's great Hey, Mark, what's your favorite guitar that you have? What's your favorite? Uh, <laughs> well, hold on. I'll just grab it. It's right there. Hold on. Hold on. Yeah, man. Do it. <laughs> I have my drumsticks. Does that count? It counts. <laughs> oh, look at the spin. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're personalized, actually. These are, these are um, high-end Vader. Okay. You can't see, but they're personalized <laughs> with my signature on them. So. Oh, nice. cool. Super cool. Sharpie yeah. markers are cheap. It's okay. easy. To get. <laughs> Sorry, Mark. Go ahead. Okay, so to answer your question, Mikey, um, so I'm I'm uh, I love guitars. They're to me they're artwork, um, and uh, but I'm a big fan of one brand, and that's the BC Rich brand. Um, I love it because I'm not a huge fan of guitar shaped guitars. So this is my newest. Oh. I picked that one up just before Christmas. Um, <laughs> yeah, there's so, you pop Mikey there. <laughs> so it's a, a, a BC Rich Bitch uh, Masterpiece uh, Edition. Um, it plays really nice. Uh, it would probably play a lot nicer with someone that I could actually play um, really well. I know I know a handful of chords and a couple of scales and, and like I said, those licks. Um, but I, I have fun. And I'll, I'll, I, I play more now that I have more guitars. So... Um, but that is probably my favorite right now. That's a um, Very nice. I, I am looking for the one that I sold. Um, I sold one in 2004 because I never thought I'd play guitar again, and I, I shouldn't have done that. <laughs> what was it? Was it BC Rich? It was an Ironbird. It was the it was the very first one I got. It was Candy Apple Red. Uh, I bought it when I was 14, um, and I thought, oh, I'm not using it. I'll sell it, and uh, it's gone. <laughs> <laughs> well, good luck, Mark. I'm on all the guitar forums. If I see one, I'll take it. Perfect. Thanks. <laughs> awesome. Very cool. Wouldn't that be awesome, eh? All of a sudden, you get a message from Mikey. Yeah. Hey, I found your guitar. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Stay tuned. <laughs> All right, well, that's pretty much it for the show tonight, guys. And as usual, before we say goodnight, we just want to remind everybody that mental health is real. Uh, make sure you're talking to people if you need to talk. If you have any stressors in life, I really hope that you have somebody that you can call or rely on to get some help. If not, there's a lot of great foundations out there helping people out. I know Aurora and I uh, support the Henry's Foundation for Mental Health uh, because they're doing great things, donating a lot of money to CAMH, Kids Help Phone, and Jack.org. Mark, you have uh, the Shoppers Drug Mart is doing a mental health uh, walk for women. Yeah, it's the the run for women. Uh, Shoppers Drug Mart is, uh, is putting that on. It's in... Um 
Oh, I can't remember how, how many cities. I think it's 18 cities across Canada or 12 cities across Canada. Um, it's a virtual run from July 4th to the 11th this year. Um, and anybody can sign up and run, um, collect some donations, and uh, and all of the monies raised go into your city's uh, mental health charities for women. So it's a, it's a great foundation, and uh, uh, it's a cause that's um, it's, it hits close to home for me. So um, I'm uh, proud to support it. And uh, Ryan, of course, on our episode zero, you talked quite candidly about some situations that you've been through in life. And you've also volunteered to be that guy if people need to talk to that. A hundred percent. Yeah. Anybody, anybody who is ever struggling through any addiction, any sort of uh, issues that way, always reach out. It's uh, it's not an easy road to come back from, but it is a road you can come back from. So please know that. Uh, trust me, I've been through that shit storm. You can always reach out and it'll always get easier. And I just wanted to say one last thing. Um, Aurora is pretty awesome as well. She is on the board for the Henry's Foundation for Mental Health. And with the work that she's done, at least in just in our new market location, we've raised over $5,000 since June for um, the Henry's Foundation. And that wouldn't have happened without Aurora steamrolling that and, and spearheading it and making it happen. Awesome so work. good Thank for you. you. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Um, anything else to say before we say goodbye? Mikey, Steph, any last words of wisdom you want to leave or you just want to peace out? <laughs> there you go. For having us. <laughs> oh. It was nice to meet both of you. Thank you very much. Yeah, very, very nice, nice to meet you guys. Us. Thanks, all right. And, and that's it for us tonight. Um, we'll see you all next week. We have some more great guests coming. And uh, if you haven't already, click like, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Tell the world the Expressions Podcast is out there trying to help people make feel better. Uh, help make people feel better. Uh, and speak gooder English. And that's it for us tonight. <laughs> <laughs> See everybody.